Welcome back to another Top 10 list. A little while back, I delved into my Top 10 Nen abilities from Hunter x Hunter, and I figured I'd take a step into Togashi's other series, Yu Yu Hakusho, and do the same thing. These are the attacks and abilities I find to be the most appealing to me, and it's not a ranking of power or prowess of any kind. Let me know what you guys think, and leave a list of your own favorite attacks down below from the series. But without any further ado, let's get started. Number 10 is going to be Game Master's ability to bring video games to life in the real world. In the third arc of Yu Yu Hakusho, Tagashi introduces the concept of territories, human beings granted with enhanced spiritual powers that are able to create an area of space where they can essentially make up their own rule. Game Master is a young boy named Tsukihito Anayuma, and he was manipulated by Sensui to join his team who had hoped to open a portal to the demon world. In order to buy time, he told Game Master to use the game Goblin City to bring to life and stall the protagonist. It's the only game we really get to see him use, but it works just as it does if you were to play the arcade version, the only difference being that real people are used as the players. I just love the creativity and concept of this of temporarily making a video game real. I mean, what if you did this to like God of War and now you have to literally fight Ares? Well, anyway, the ability seems to represent the rules of the gameplay. The unfortunate thing about this is the game shown in the anime pits the creator in the role of the Goblin King, who dies if the game is won, meaning the only way to beat the game and free yourself is to kill the Game Master, a child. That's some heavy shit, and it's one of my favorite moments of the entire series. At number 9, I have Jin's ability to manipulate and control wind. Jin is a demon who makes his appearance in the Dark Tournament arc as a member of an opposing team, facing off against Yusuke, and he gleefully shows the extent of his ability. Manipulating the air around him gives him the ability to fly, which of course would come in handy in all aspects of life, and he can also create many tornadoes that swirl around his fists. Hitting you with this punch not only knocks you down, but also gets you tangled up in a whirlwind, knocking you in all kinds of directions. He can even use wind to block attacks and send them flying away. He might be a tad bit obnoxious as a character, but he's a fun-loving one that treats his ability as playful and exciting as you would expect, and you would probably do the same thing if you could. And number 8 is the classic and iconic Spirit Gun. This is the signature move of our protagonist Yusuke, and it's pretty simplistic. Yusuke channels his spirit energy throughout his body, directs it into his finger, and then fires it like a blast. It takes a heavy inspiration from other series like Dragon Ball's Kamehameha Wave, but it also has its roots in Eastern philosophies and being able to channel one's own life force. I couldn't make this list without it being here, somewhere, and basically it's incredibly iconic to the show and what Yu Yu Hakusho fan has not tried to mimic or try to do the spirit gun at least one point in their life. Number 7 is going to be Younger Tagoro's ability to enhance his strength and power. He can control and decide exactly how much of his total power he can put into his mass at any one given time, oftentimes even stating what percentage he's at as he grows stronger and his muscles and body become bigger and more monstrous. Tagoro was once a human who once won the Dark Tournament many years ago and had himself turned into a demon by the committee. He wanted to be the kind of demon with absolute strength so that he could never be put down again, until he would eventually meet his end at the hands of another warrior that was on his level. He can also take this even further and change himself into a full demon form, making him look almost non-human at that point, and even suck the life energy out of others to become even stronger. On top of that, he has regenerative capabilities, and it's no shock that Tagoro is one of the best and most memorable antagonists of the entire series. At number 6 is Kurama's ability to manipulate plant life. Kurama was a fox demon, and so it's in tune with nature and wildlife that he can take his demon energy and use it on some small form of plant life, usually a seed or something, and turn it into something ferocious and deadly. Of course, his signature weapon is the Rose Whip, in which he just carries an ordinary rose around, but turns it into a whip covered with thorns using his energy. But the ones that I always thought were the most amazing were the Seed of the Death Plant, in which Kurama finds a small cut or opening in somebody's body and inserts a seed, and then he slowly feeds that seed with his energy until it bursts open with all sorts of flowers and thorns, killing its opponent instantly. Or when he used the Sinning Tree, basically a tree that attaches to a target and feeds them imagery of their fears and feeds on their life force until they die. Yeah, you definitely don't want to mess with Kurama. Number 5 is Asato Kito's territory ability of Shadow. Kito is another human granted with territory abilities, and he's always seemed really interesting to me. Where if he steps on your shadow, you are paralyzed in place, basically treating your shadow like an extension of yourself, and he was able to restrain Yusuke after he won the Dark Tournament, where Yusuke was seemingly the strongest guy around. But it's not about strength when you're dealing with outside-the-box abilities like the territories. He can also manipulate his own shadow to act independently of himself, and it can interact with physical objects as he was able to write in blood using only his shadow. I've just always really liked this concept, and I wish we would have gotten to see a little bit more of him fully utilizing the shadow ability. 
Number four is going to be the power of taboo performed by Yu Kaito. Kaito was another human being who was able to use the powers of territory. I think this is one of the more interesting ones, though, as he, being an academic and a non-fighter, can create a taboo within his own territory, meaning he can say that something is off-limits. In the series, he taboos violence. So when someone tries to attack him, they are unable to complete the attack, and for breaking the taboo, their soul is temporarily removed, until Kaito decides to undo it, which is insanely powerful if you think about it, since the man is literally in charge of what happens to your soul if you break his taboo. He you can also taboo certain words or even combinations of words, so if they are spoken, you also lose your soul. In a series that's so filled with characters who are fighters, it was really cool to see someone the characters had to defeat using their intellect. At number three is Elder Tagoro's ability to change, morph, stretch, and manipulate his own body. Elder Tagoro was also turned from man into demon, but his ability is very different than his brother's. Elder Tagoro can shapeshift and turn his body into virtually anything. A dagger, a sword, a semi-automatic machine gun, or at least that was a line in the dub anyway. But no, he's basically like the T-1000 from Terminator 2. His whole body, any part of him, can be used as a weapon. He can thin his skin so much that it's impenetrable, and he can even move his organs wherever he wants to, so it's nearly impossible to deliver a fatal blow. On top of that, he has a creepy, sadistic confidence when it comes to his ability, and who can blame him? Even after being flattened and punched into pieces, he regenerated his head and then was able to attach to another person's body and take it over. This ability is one of the most unstoppable in the series and deserves a high spot on my list. At number two is my boy Kuwabara and his dimension-splitting sword, the Jigento. Similarly to the spirit gun, Kuwabara has the ability to channel his spirit energy into a weapon, focusing on a sword, kind of like creating a lightsaber from scratch. But the Jigento further enhances this power and gives him the power to cut through territories of others or even dimensions themselves. Kuwabara is probably my favorite character in the series, and he always has such a code of honor and loyalty to his friends, which I appreciate. And it seems as though his power and spirit are ahead of his body, preparing him to create the Jigento weeks before he would actually need to use it. It's an ability that at first could only be used when he was in the heightened state of emotion and intensity, but he seems to be able to conjure it at will after a few instances of that. I just think this ability is super cool and represents Kuwabara very well as a character. And my number one favorite ability in Yu Yu Hakusho goes to... The Dragon of the Darkness Flame, performed by the main demon character, Hiei. The Darkness Flame technique is known to be incredibly destructive and dangerous, even for its user. Hiei conjures the flames of the demon world through his arm and unleashes it on an opponent which will be completely devoured by the flame. But it takes a toll on the user if it's not mastered, and the user suffers from a burnt-up arm like Hiei did, or, like I said, they could also be devoured as well. That is, of course, unless you are able to absorb the dragon itself. When the dragon was turned on Hiei in my favorite fight of the entire series, Hiei vs. Bui, Hiei accepted it into his own body, and instead of the dragon devouring him, the opposite happened. This effectively gave Hiei all the power of the dragon within his own physical body. And this again, of course, increases all your strength and power, and Bui was not a threat to him at all after this had happened. Hiei uses this a few more times later on, but it's never as epic as it was when it was first shown. I think this ability has everything you want in a shonen. It's incredibly powerful, it looks really cool, it's a great concept, and it comes with a price to be paid so that not everyone could use it or even live through the training. And so, there you have it guys. Those are my top 10 abilities shown in the anime series Yu Yu Hakusho. One of my favorite anime of all time, and if you've never seen it, besides me just spoiling a bunch of things in this video, I implore you to check it out. Trust me, you will not regret it. Anyways, thanks as always for watching, guys. Give this video a thumbs up if you'd like. Subscribe if you want to stick around and see some more content. If not, that's cool too. I won't hold it against you. Let me know your favorite Yu Yu Hakusho abilities down below, and I'll talk to you next time.